All right, so we have learned everything about SN1 and SN2 reaction, okay? Now, we're gonna compare and contrast, and we're gonna use this for the next uh, next topic, all right? All right, start with an SN2 real quick. So the mechanism is a backside attack, all right? The J energy diagram is just one step reaction. Backside attack, bam, you done, get the product right away. So it's concerted. Uh, and alkyl halide, the smaller, the better, right? High sterically hindered uh, tertiary alkyl halide never do back, um, an SN2 reaction. And alkyl halide on double bond, we call vinyl uh, alkyl halide. So that uh, doesn't do SN2 reaction either. Uh, the red of equation is a bimolecular reaction suggesting that there are there's a collision, direct collision between the nucleophile and the electrophile. The stereochemistry, since it does backside attack, so we get inversion of configuration. Start with R, you get S, start with S, you get R. And a solvent, we want a solvent that stabilizes a cat, uh, cation, but leave the anion or the nucleophile alone, stay reactive. So the polar A product solvent will do that. It won't form a, a solvent cage just like in um, the polar product solvent, okay? Now, move on to the SN1, the mechanism. They are two-step reaction, right? Uh, so carbocation formation, and then followed by nucleophilic attack. Uh, the energy diagram will see two humps. Because it's, we call it stepwise reaction. The first step is carbocation formation. You get intermediate, and then a carbocation uh, undergoes nucleophilic attack with the nucleophile from the product. All right. The alkyl halide, the bigger the better because of the uh, higher degree of uh, hyperconjugation. Tertiary the best, followed by the second. Primary and methyl never do an SN1 reaction, at least alone. Uh, you might see a case of primary, but that's because of something else stabilize it. All right, like a resonant or something. Um, the rate of equation <clears throat> um, is unique molecular reaction. It depends on the concentration of only one species, the, um, the alkyl halide, right, which can form um, carbocation. Since uh, we have a carbocation, the stereo, stereo chemistry of the product is racemic rac mixture because um, the nucleophile can attack from back and the front side. All right, and the solvent, we want something that can stabilize the whole thing, everything in the solution. So we, we want polar product solvent, all right? <clears throat> okay, all right, now for uh, an SN1 reaction, just a little bit more. So when you see a carbocation, be aware with these two R events, or like letter R. So when you see a carbocation, these two R events can occur. You have to be mindful, like watch out for them. Uh, first R, we call racem... Oh. Yep, okay, the first R is racemization, which means that you will get uh, the an, uh, equal amount of inversion and retention product, right? You get both products because of the carbocation is flat, the nucleophile can attack from back and front side, right? Or another R, rearrangement. If the carbocation is not stable enough, Ask yourself, find something that can make it more stable, right? For example, you see tertiary carbocation is not stable. Can you make it stable? Look to, uh, for hydrogen on the right side. Nope, that's going to be primary. Look from the left side. Oh, that's tertiary right there. Move the uh, hydride shift. You will get tertiary carbocation, right? As we call it, hydride shift. And if you don't see a hydride shift, look for an alkyl shift, right? In this case, it's a methyl shift from onto the right side. You get better carbocation. And hydride is a oh, hydride uh, occurs occurs faster than an alkyl shift. All right. Uh, if you don't see a hydride shift, look for an alkyl shift. Okay. So if you say carbocation, be mindful for two R event racemization. Can you can you get two products? All right. If you don't, um, uh, or a rearrangement could be hydride shift or could be alkyl shift. All right. All right. Here's what we're gonna use now. All right. So predicting the product of a substitution reaction is really important. Right, and uh, <clears throat> a substitution reaction can go either way. Can go SN2 reaction, you get an inversion product, or an SN1 reaction, you get rac uh, racemic mixture. Why do we care about it? Why, why uh, predicting 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 products of a substitution reaction important? I'll give you some example. If you still remember this from chapter five, right? I'm talking about the uh, application of stereochemistry. So these two are enantiomers, right? One of them is a medicine, the, uh, the S naproxen, the R naproxen is a toxin, kill your liver. To make these two, look at how, do, how they make it. There are multiple ways that can uh, make S naproxen the medicine, right? This one is from uh, 1997, it's an old way to do it. There are five steps from uh, two naphthol, add five more reagents to get to uh, S naproxen. All right, and uh, 
The last step is the uh, a substitution reaction of this compound with this alkyl halide. All right. It is important to know if this if this reaction will go SN one or SN two, and here's the reason why. If this go on SN two reaction. I will go SN2. What's the um, mechanism of an SN2? Well, backside attack. One step happen, bam, you get an SN proxin right away. All right. And uh, SN2 reaction is stereo specific, which means that if you start with R, you're going to get only S. You're not going to get the R neproxin, which is toxin, will kill your liver. All right. So this is what we want it to happen. However, if you, if you don't know, and this happened, if this reaction were to go SN1 reaction, bromine leaves first. I'm sure you can guess now what I'm going to say. Bromine leaves first. All right, you get a carbocation. And this this guy right here is going to go attack from front side or the back side. Oh, no, the back side or the front side. All right. In this case, your solution, the the, the, um, um, the solution, your final solution is going to be a mixture between a medicine and a toxin. Can you sell this, or do you do you want to eat that if you're a cons uh, uh, a, it, a consumer, <laughs> right? Consumer, that's what you name. That's what I want to say. If you are uh, a patient to buy this medicine, do you want to eat that? No, no way. So this is your life. Your life and death depends on this this reaction. If it go SN one reaction or it go SN two reaction, this is really important. All right. Now to be able to determine if a reaction go SN one and SN two. There are three things that you have to consider, three factors. One, nucleophile. Two, a struct the structure of an alkyl halide. And three, the solvent used. Okay, so we're going to go through this one by one. And at the end, you should be able to predict the product or suggest a synthesis. All right. Okay, let's go take a look at the next video. Start with the alkyl halide.